Hi! We're going to take about 10 minutes and show you how to create a comic strip with Comic Strip Factory. When you first create a comic strip document, this panel lets you set the initial size, rows, panels, and appearance. This time we're going to change it to a two panel strip and set a hand drawn panel shape. And we're going to adjust the workspace a little bit so that you can see the whole comic and still have room for our catalog below. And we're ready to get started. The first thing we're going to do is bring in a background. My story is set in Fred's home office. As you can see, he has an office in the city, too. But we're going to use the home office by dragging it up to the first panel. The background is a group, so we're going to double click to edit that group so that we can move the desk and chair over to the left, making room for a character on the right. We need a similar background in the second panel, so we're going to option drag to make a copy of that background and bring it into the second panel. This takes place in another part of the room, so we don't need the desk and chair. So we're going to edit the group again and delete the desk and chair. Then we're going to select the wall and flip it to bring the window over to the right hand side. Then we're going to drag the background into place in the window. And I don't want it showing the exact same thing outside because it's a different window. So we're going to resize it so we can only see sky. And then we're going to send the background elements in both panels to the background layer. What this does is allow us to edit the foreground layer without having to worry about accidentally moving the background. When I click in the foreground layer, nothing in the background layer is affected. So now we need a character. We need Root Wizard, and he's going to be jumping up in the air in joy over something Fred has just told him. We can drag in a stock pose for this. Now we're going to need Fred, and Fred's going to be sitting at his desk. We have a pose that this desk and chair were designed to be used with. We can drop him in and you can see he fits just right there. But we don't really like his head in this pose. He doesn't look happy and he's supposed to be making a big announcement. So his, this pose is a group and we're going to edit it. We're going to delete his head and bring in another one from the Fred file that is more appropriate to the story. It's facing in the wrong direction, so we're going to flip it and reposition. Then we can exit the group. Now we'll give them both something to say. Fred's going to be making his happy announcement that Comic Strip Factory is in the App Store. And as is typical in comic strips, we're going to emphasize a few words by bold facing. And then we can reposition the balloon over Fred's head and move the pointer and edit the pointer's shape to give it a little curve. Now we'll give the Root Wiz something to say, and he's going to be shouting it. For that shouting, we'll want a slightly bigger point sized on the text, and then we'll move the balloon into place next to the wizard and aim the pointer at his mouth. Then we're going to go to Balloon Properties, where we can make additional appearance changes. We're going to give the balloon a two-point line thickness to make it look a little bit louder. Then we'll go back down to Fred in that catalog and bring in his walking pose. But again, the head isn't quite right, so we'll edit that group and find a better head. He should be looking forward and talking, not talking to the audience. Now we'll give Fred something to say in the second panel. And again, we're going to boldface a word for emphasis.
Now we'll bring in the Root Wiz, and he's going to be walking too, but also looking out the window. He has a standard pose that we can use as is. He comes in in front of Fred, but he should be behind him, so we're going to send him to the back. And then we can give him something to say. Now we'll have to play with the sizes and positions of the two balloons to make sure they both fit and don't block the window where we're going to have some more action going on. For this, we're going to go into the background layer, because the other character in this comic is going to be outside the window. For now, we're going to assemble him right here. This pose looks like he's dancing, a little bit, but he doesn't look at all happy, so we're going to have to change his head. There are a couple of happy faces down there, but I think we want one that's really excited. So we're going to grab this one. It just needs to be rotated a little bit to fit with the body, but that's easy enough. And then we drop it on. Now we're going to take his arm and hand and rotate them. I'm going to move the origin point up to the shoulder before I rotate it, and that way it rotates around the origin. It swivels around the shoulder so we can see what it looks like and tell more easily when it is in the right position. But the hand is wrong. We need to use a hand that looks like it could be holding a sign and spinning it around. This one is good, but the thumb is pointing in the wrong direction. With a simple flip, we can turn a right hand into a left hand, and then rotate it and drop it into position. Now we need the sign. I have a copy of the Comic Strip Factory logo graphic on my desktop, and I can drop it into the panel. It comes in really big, so we're going to have to scale it down to be in scale with Sam. Now it's just floating there so we need a new part to be the sign body. We'll use the background context view option so we can see how big the part needs to be. We'll make a rectangle, then we'll use the reshaping tool to add points in the middle of each end. and we'll reshape the rectangle into an arrow shape. When we return to the comic, we see the sign shape is in front of the logo. We want it behind the logo, but not behind anything else. We'll use the send backward command to just push it back one layer right behind the logo. Then we'll group the logo and the sign so we can manipulate them as one object. We have two groups here, the SAM group and the sign group. We're going to select them both and merge them so they become one group. Then we can edit that group and bring the head to the front of the sign. Now we have Sam fully assembled, but he's supposed to be outside the window, which means he's farther away. We'll scale him down to make him look more distant. We have to put him outside the window, so I've sent him to the back. Unfortunately, this puts him behind the sky, so to fix this, we need to ungroup the background, then select just the sky and send it to the back. Now we can do our final positioning on Sam and his sign. When we switch back to the foreground layer, you can see that we're done.